Firstly, why crack verbal? Because I had such a great time with all the GMAT preparation. I felt it was sort of a natural choice. And also in terms of what crack verbal offered me in terms of like, you know, the five schools, I felt that offered me a lot more flexibility. And in all my sort of conversations with the team, I always felt supported. Yeah, so uh, about me, you know, I've uh, sort of born and brought up in Bangalore, uh, sort of did my schooling here and then, you know, around 12th, I didn't really have a clue what to do. So I did engineering. So I did, uh, you know, electronics and communications engineering from PES college here in Bangalore. And around, uh, you know, by the time of the second year, um, I sort of realized, you know, this is not for me, especially, you know, something technical in that domain. And I wasn't really interested in becoming uh, like a developer or switch to coding, which a lot of, you know, people in some of these non-computer science streams also do. So I started looking for other sort of domains, other things that interested me. And at that point, I sort of became interested in finance and I sort of tailored, you know, my preparation for, you know, the campus placements accordingly. And by the time it was sort of fourth year, I ended up getting an internship at uh, Goldman Sachs. And I sort of took that up and after five months, the internship, I converted that into a full-time position. And, you know, over the past four and a half years, I've sort of been there. Keeping that in mind, I decided, you know, pursuing a, a job in, in consultancy would be something that I would uh, want to do. And that's when I sort of decided, okay, it's the right time to sort of see if MBA is, uh, whether I'll sort of be able to crack it. And towards uh, the end of uh, 2022, I started, you know, the preparation for GMAT. My first score was alright, but uh, I think uh, in order to sort of go and sort of see if I can sort of improve that, I sort of took it again in 2023 and I sort of submitted my applications fall of 2023 for the intake of 2024. Towards the end of my engineering, as uh, once I'd also gotten sort of the placements and all that sorted, I also decided, you know, why not see if I can get a deferred admit? You know, it's just something as an option, you know, you don't need to sort of pick it up. I think ISB had, I think, the Young Leaders program. I said, why not? You know, now anyway, I'm not interested in engineering. So actually, I did write GMAT way back in college itself and I'd sort of gone with, I think at that point, there were in person uh, classes in uh, Malaysia from Bangalore with uh, Crack Verbal. So I did uh, sort of go there. And I sort of prepared for three months on the weekend, sort of go to the classes. And, and that really helped sort of get, for me to get an understanding of what the GMAT was about. And I think at that point, it was very easy also in terms of getting the, being in the mind of a student because anyway, I was in college. So uh, it was just a matter of like, you know, and the math was way more uh, easier at that point because I was doing, you know, all the Fourier transforms and all that that comes with engineering. So it was easier to grasp and that gave me a good handle of things. So once I started working, the challenge, biggest challenge was obviously time to prepare. I think the GMAT format itself had not really changed that much in terms of from when I first wrote it to the attempt that I did in 2022. It was more along in terms of getting the time to sort of prepare, especially I think the number one challenge in GMAT also is the time, right? In terms of managing the time, being able to answer all the questions, not being stuck at any point. So I had to sort of spend some time, you know, uh, to get adjusted to the speed. So what I did was, uh, you know, I took the online crack verbal option on demand because given my sort of schedule at Goldman Sachs, some days I would sort of come home really late, some days I would have a bit of time. So it, having a fixed schedule wouldn't have worked. So the on demand uh, or, you know, option that crack verbal provided was amazing. And using, you know, time that I got, I sort of started preparing, you know, after I came home from work on weekends. And what I did also was uh, two weeks before the exam itself, I sort of took holiday from uh, Goldman Sachs, I took two, two weeks of leave and sort of did intense preparation because I feel that um, you know, the more intense you are closer to the exam, it helps you sort of be on top of your game on the day of the exam. So yeah, I, I think it worked out all right. And yeah, I think the second and having that previous experience really helped me. And then for the third attempt, uh, it, it was more about fine tuning some of the weaker areas. I think within quant, you know, data sufficiency was something that I felt I could do a lot better in. So I focused more on that. And in, in the verbal section also, I think I was pretty good in uh, reading and uh, critical uh, reasoning. It was more the sentence correction bit. Yeah, I think uh, having those uh, having those experiences previously helped a lot. Uh, 
yeah i think firstly why crack verbal because i had such a great time with all the gmat preparation i felt it was sort of a natural choice and also in terms of what crack verbal offered me in terms of like you know the five schools i felt that offered me a lot more flexibility and in all my sort of conversations with the team i always felt supported and it was sort of came from a, a place that you guys with experience in this domain also a lot of success stories from previous candidates all of that made it uh, sort of like a no brainer for me and in terms of you know why you need a consultant i do i do feel that you know having someone who's been on the other side right who sort of done an mba or who knows the admissions process really sort of fills in some of the gaps you may have in your own mind in terms of what you what you actually don't even know you may know that you don't know a few things but there are also things that you don't know you don't know so i think you know that's where a consultant really sort of helps they sort of uh, give you uh, give you way more context in terms of why you should approach a particular essay in this way they give you more context on how a particular school things uh, what particularly works with ad coms what does not so i think all of that really comes into play and also in terms of managing your own timelines right you know obviously as a working professional it can get tricky in terms of you know managing your workload as well as managing all of these applications and especially if you're doing multiple schools for the same round it can also get challenging uh, to just hit the deadlines so i feel all those aspects a consultant really comes in handy offer you great advice and yeah they really sort of uh, fine tune your story they know what to highlight you know what to uh, stress upon in each candidate story and i think that's what i found very very uh, helpful in my context Yeah I think the approach was you know obviously you have a target in mind in terms of what you want to do post MBA so I think that was like the starting point then obviously there's going to be a big profile evaluation with track verbal so they look at you know your score your work experience what are your extracurriculars they look at also you know in terms of any geographic sort of preference that you have whether you have sort of specific ideas whether you want to work on east coast west coast uh, or you want to maybe also think europe so all those are always options on the table so it begins with you know the profile ev- evaluation as well as you know what your target industry and role is uh, so i think uh, for me the experience was you know as i mentioned i think i wanted to focus on being a consultant uh, in the us so my sort of geographic sort of range was you know mostly just in the us and i have spent a lot of time i think um, mostly with you sandeep in terms of going through my profile looking at you know what i had done what what i want to do and i think it was really helpful having the list of schools to select right as i said it wasn't like you know you said just these five schools this is what you need to focus on it i got i think a list of like 15 schools if i'm not wrong to sort of consider and it was ultimately my decision uh, in terms of what i sort of uh, prioritized for round one and also the other thing that really helped is you also need to look at you know the competition pool for these various schools you know also given their rankings as well as you know for those industries how many applicants they get and things like that so i think the categorization between you know which is like a dream school which is a sort of a achievable or reach school or versus something that's safe i think that also helped me sort of tailor my approach so i didn't sort of have to go with all safe schools or i didn't have to dream and sort of go for all the tougher schools i think uh, that was sort of my experience i felt it was good and also the other part of my experience is after i applied to sort of the fourth schools i felt like the fifth school i had chosen wasn't really right from a strategy standpoint so i know I, and yeah i could sort of uh, switch it up for midway through my applications and sort of when uh, i went with the other school links for what i don't even plan yeah i think the so, so my first interview was uh, darden and uh, yeah going in you know i didn't really know what to expect i i mean i had an idea you look at gmat club you look at uh, other forums you see what other people are being asked and you do some prep but i think you know with crack global i also had you know the mock interviews that were offered right and i think just i think it was just maybe like 3 4 days before the actual interview i did one with you and yeah that really helped sort of and and there's also the recording which you can sort of play back and see how you're doing yourself and the, also the sort of the feedback session up the mock interview was really helpful in terms of um, sort of seeing where you know you can improve i mean i know the focus isn't really on the delivery aspect there is also uh, you know there's obviously body language and all of that but i think for me what where it helped was trying to see where i was spending too much time where it was not probably not required and maybe things that i could sort of frame better when it came to certain answers so i think uh, that experience really helped uh, fine tune sort of my preparation ahead of the actual interview and also the sort of questions that were uh, sort of being asked in the mock were fairly similar to what came in the actual interview itself and that sort of helped me sort of gain confidence ahead of 
you know the interview and then sort of settle down know that you know it's not going to be something crazy no one's going to ask you know or something that you haven't prepared but it's more about getting to know one another so i think um, that whole experience was uh, pretty seamless and once you sort of did the first one the other ones as well were fairly uh, sort of similar there were a few uh, interviews where the emphasis was more on maybe some situation based questions versus you know just asking why am i and things like that but you know i also did a second mock ahead of my unc interview with uh, shriman so that also sort of uh, helped me cover some of the other bases you know i think one of the areas where i hadn't sort of focused on during the initial interview phase was connecting with you know existing students and alumni that much so i think i uh, having the feedback from that interview really helped me sort of polish on those aspects and yeah i think the other two interviews as well went uh, really well so yeah i think a great experience and yeah i, I frankly should say it was also enjoyable some of the interviews you know uh, with the ad com or with the alumni i felt that you know it was a pretty pretty enjoyable experience overall preparing and uh, attending those interviews yeah i think uh, one advice maybe is to sort of really be clear in their own mind about why exactly they want to do an mba and what they want to get out of it i felt that aspect of your story is really core in terms of not just your application but also your own motivation in terms of you know whether it's preparing for your gmat whether it's writing those 300 400 word essays whether it's sort of approaching you know your managers for recommendations all of things become way more easier once you have a clear story in your own mind about why you want to do this so i think that's uh, going to be my you know number one advice to anyone who who's thinking about this so you know yeah, exactly i think uh, same on my end i definitely enjoyed working with uh, crack pogul i always felt it was seamless so i want to thank you thank uh, crystal thanks trace thanks free man all the people that i interacted with was was amazing and yeah always prompt always responsive to any of my queries that i had and uh, even with the deadlines approaching you know people were flexible and helped me sort of meet every, all all the sort of deadlines as well as get all the answers that i had at the right time and uh, yeah that really made a big difference at the end so yeah big thank you for my end as well